Hello? Hey, this is Caleb. Can you hear me okay? Hmm? Is this Costantinos? Uh, yes, it is. Hey, I'm calling back about, uh, actually, it looks like three properties in Georgia. Uh, oh, my, yeah, Caleb. Yeah, is now a bad time? No, 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 I'm in the office. I can, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. Okay, well, so um, I usually call when somebody has made a cash offer that did not go through for whatever reason, and um, okay. my job is to figure out, is there another way that we can satisfy everybody's needs here? And so I'm the creative sure. creative finance guy is what, what they call me, and I'm kind of a consultant for several different property buyers. Okay, awesome. So can you kind of catch me up to speed on where you guys were and where you would like to be, like why you're trying to sell and what success looks like? You know, the whole, the big picture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just so you, just so you're some fully transparent. I'm an investor myself. So I've got a bunch right. of, I probably own 30 or so um, residential real estate properties. And this one development that you guys had uh, text me about, I've got six properties in there and I'd be willing to sell probably three of them. Um, but they're not going to be, you know, they're going to be at market value or more, right? And so I know I, you know, I don't know what your strategy is or how you guys do it. And so we are. Let's see, I've got um, two that have tenants in them. I don't know what your end goal is. Them? Do you guys are you, are you trying no, to take cash flow out of them or what? Yeah, the, buy and hold. Um, sometimes we'll find partners. Like if they need rehab, we'll find partners and and either sell off the contract or. Uh, but I myself, okay. personally, I'm buy and hold, and I work with a lot of buy and hold. So I'm trying to get into more Airbnbs, actually. Okay. I've got two long-term rentals, and I'm yeah. trying to get into short-term. So, so you know. for me, that's actually what I'm trying. So these are so these ones here are long-term rentals. I've had them for 15-plus <clears> years. Um, and they're, they're new roofs. I mean, they're good. They're great properties. Um, little gated community, but I'm doing the same. I've been converting properties into short-term Airbnbs because the return on them are like, you know, I know it's time. crazy. Where are you going for your comps on yeah. that stuff? It's pretty awesome. Um, so for me, I'm always looking in. I like. Um, I'm from Brevard County. That's where I was grew up on the east coast of Florida. Mm -hmm. and so I go into like smaller. I go into like smaller, older neighborhoods, but I like stuff that's on the water. Mm. So I picked up a few cheap ones for a couple hundred thousand. I put 150 into them. I furnish them, and you know they're renting out for. 350 400 a night like yeah. non-stop like so did you i mean did you, know, you do like so, a uh comparative analysis of the uh projected incomes and everything before you did that uh, you know what i don't i you know what i don't i've got um I've i, got I have to do that because i'm nationwide so i gotta look into each market as i as i pull them up on the phone i gotta look up the oh, market okay. so because oh, cool. i'm out of very kansas cool. city and i call nationwide Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we do, I might do my own little research, but, um, it's, um, I've been a realtor for, I don't have my license right now, but for probably 15 or 20 years, just for my own personal, um, investment properties, like to be able to research and do all that stuff, but I don't have any kind of, you know, programs that I'm looking at or financial yeah. models, or, I mean, I'm, okay. I'm a finance guy myself, but I just, yeah, I'm just doing a little bit of research, but, um, but anyways, so, so uh, you know, I'm getting ready to list these three properties, and so when you guys called, I'm guessing the deal isn't going to work based on what I'm thinking you guys are looking yeah, for. Yeah, if you don't have any pain um, or anything that's like pushing you to go ahead and make it. Yeah, there's no pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no pain. Yeah, there's no pain at all. I just the market's so hot right here, man. I'm just I, I agree. I I, things for for 150, and I'm going to list them for 400 and change, like you know, in the high 300s, and they're probably in this little development. They're new, normally on the market for like three or four days. Like they, they, yeah, it's just weird. They just sell super fast. So anyways, yeah, man, that's what I figured, but, uh, no pain, not right now. Okay. Well, the thing we do in, in circumstances where there's not a lot of pain and you, you know, you want to sell them, obviously I would disqualify early on and say, why don't you list it with a realtor? Because I can't really right. compete with the market that well. Um, but there sure. have been instances where, one of my partners has paid over retail on seller finance with low interest because he knew the appreciation ah, was going to catch up it. with it. And so got it, basically got when, it, got you it. know, when you sell the property, somebody's going to make tens and tens of thousands of dollars in interest. And so it depends on right. if you want to upgrade from landlord to lender at that point. And if you do, then that money's yours and we pay you the interest. Got it. So got do these it, still have it. mortgages? So what does that normally so what is it normal? Uh, very small ones. Like one has like seventy thousand. I mean, you know, if I wanted to, I could, I could pay them off. But um, 
Yeah, okay. So tell me what a deal normally looks like for you on that. Um, like, from, like me, what's the down payment? What's the? Oh, sure. Like, yeah. Like on a four hundred thousand dollars sale. Yeah. What is it? What is the deal? What does economics normally look like? What's the interest rate? What's the term? What's the? So I um I get bonus up front on every every contract I put together. So that I do have to factor that into you know the down payment has to leave enough room for me to get my bonus on the front end of uh of something like Got that it. and sometimes i'll stay attached to a deal sometimes i don't but that would be for like a four hundred thousand dollar property uh the total cash out of pocket for the end buyer investor whether that's me or a partner cannot be more than 20 percent, or it just won't work and then okay um i try to i, I run my numbers on the rental long-term and short-term rental fronts. And if we can't get a 12% cash on cash return, which is why it's important to have a low down payment, then it's no deal. Got it. Okay. But we'll put okay. together uh, a down payment package and then um, seller finance usually for um, a 30 year term. And now if we're buying at or above market rate, we may, we're definitely going to want a longer seller finance period, but um, it's totally okay to have a balloon date and, and get you out seven, 10 years from now. Or, uh, you know, my partner did one where he's going to run it for a full 20 years straight with the seller because they wanted Got it. good grief, a hundred thousand dollars over asking or over market for the property, but it worked. And, you know, he knew the area and, and the appreciation caught up with it two years later and he's in great shape. So and it was at like, like 2% like interest. Got it. Like this, yeah. This one, oh, right. So I mean, you're right. The the sale price, right? When you're financing, yeah, you've taken the interest rate for sure. Um. Okay. I mean, I'm guessing, like, like I said, this, uh, like for this property, the one specific one that that I'm, I was, I'm gonna list at 410, um, and I'll probably sell at 410. It'll, it, you know, you're looking at about a 22 to 23 hundred dollar per month, um, rental rate. Nice. It's, it's about 2,500 square feet. So it's a good one. I mean, it's a, you know, and I've had it rented for, you know, whatever, 15 years. Um, but yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if I'd want to do owner financing, man. Cause part of the reason I'd want to, part of the reason I'd want to do it is to get some of this cash out to put, um, right. I figured into another property. So, so are you, you going to 1031 these? To me. Um, I, yeah, I was thinking, but I've done it before, uh, you know, okay. that would probably make sense. So my base is, my basis is all very low in these properties. I've had them for so long. Yeah. So otherwise, I'll be paying a you know a, a buttload. And pain. yeah. So here's the other thing. Uh, most people don't know this, but you can do a 1031 with a seller finance. So and it works for the payments as well as the down payment. Basically, as long as that money doesn't oh, really? touch okay. your bank account, it goes through the intermediary. So oh, let's let's let me just it. throw some numbers out, right? So if you wanted to buy another property of equal value just for simplest math. And we gave yep. you a down payment of, uh, let's say 15%. That would, and okay. well, how much can you get into a property for? What do you mean? For like what, 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 what do percent mean, down like, uh, payment? If I was buy another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I normally put 20% down. I mean, I don't. Okay. Yeah. So I'll we'd be. As, I'll leverage them up as high as I can. So yeah. I these rates, but well, we'd be five percent behind you on that then. So, but um, Got it. Let, let's say I can give you fifteen percent down. Well, that goes to the intermediary, and that goes straight toward okay. your next property. And then the monthly payments. So let's say your mortgage was going to be pretty close to whatever we set up. Our payments go into that intermediary, right. and then they're dispersed straight to the mortgage on your new property. And they they never touch your account. So if there's a, a positive or negative difference you know, between what's, what's coming in and what's going, what's owed, then that money, you either pay the difference or, um, the extra gets paid to you and you get taxed on what actually comes to you. Oh, very cool. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty neat. And so it that's might be, stuff, it might be that we could do something along those lines, but again, I, I think you're in a pretty good situation. Um, we'd be doing some fancy footwork to put something together like that. But the yeah, other thing we have is we've got a lot of flexibility and timeline. That's that's what I can really offer, I think, is my highest value here, is if we can do a 1031 and offer you a really flexible timeline, like give you uh, six months before we close, and you just tell us 30 days before the time you want to close, then you can start shopping because you know what you're going to have. So we can have everything on paper and signed, just pending close date. Got it. 
I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay, 